insane prison escapes of the 20th and 21st centuries. Whether it's Shawshank Redemption style or Clint Eastwood in Escape from Alcatraz, there are inventive and insane ways people have tried to escape from prison. The fear of a life behind bars can drive people to do crazy things, and in this video, we'll be looking at five of the most bonkers escape attempts from the 20th and 21st centuries. Victor Folk Nelson Victor Folk Nelson was an impulsive and troubled young man, having been brought up poor and largely in an orphanage. His first arrest was at age 18 for larceny. He spent the next two years in and out of a naval jail before receiving a dishonorable discharge and beginning a life of robbery and more larceny. At age 22, Victor Nelson found himself once again locked up, this time in Charlestown State Prison in Massachusetts. Fed up with spending his life behind bars, he began to plan his escape. First, he altered the shoes given to him as part of his prison uniform, removing the heavy thick bases and replacing them with homemade felt soles. Then on the night of May 11, 1921, after evening school, when he and 12 other prisoners were being marched back to their cells, he saw his chance to escape. Breaking from the line, he dodged a tackle from a nearby guard, evaded multiple gunshots, and channeling his inner Spider-Man jumped and caught onto some window bars before scaling the 40-foot high wall. Once at the top, he used hitherto unknown parkour skills to throw himself across a massive 10-foot gap to the outer wall, where he grabbed hold of the edge of a building, using his elbows to push himself up and ungracefully fall 30 feet down to the other side to freedom. Nelson spent the next 10 days chilling around Boston and even taking part in a game of scrub baseball before heading to Ohio. He remained at large until August, when he turned himself in after hearing Thomas Mott Osborne, a prison administrator, give a speech on prison reform. Inspired, Nelson decided to give the right track a try. Choi Gap Bok Choi Gap Bok earned the nickname the Korean Houdini with his jailbreak attempt back in 2012. Gepok had been arrested on September 12th of the same year, under suspicion of robbery, and was being held in a cell at a police station in the city of Daegu, South Korea. The 50-year-old's previous detentions had totaled 23 years and included crimes of leading a theft ring. Within a few days, Gepok decided he had enough of this being incarcerated nonsense. He covered his bed with pillows and a blanket, so it looked like he was still sleeping before attempting his escape. Using his master yoga skills and flexibility that would make a Cirque du Soleil performer jealous, Choi Gat Bok shimmied his way out of his cell by slithering through the food slot. These food slots are tiny at just 5.9 inches tall and 17.7 .7 inches wide. Yet Gat Bok used his powers of contortion to make his escape through the hole in just 34 seconds, while guards slept meters away. The police caught up to him six days later after an intense manhunt through the mountains that involved helicopters, eight sniffer dogs, and hundreds of officers. Leaving apologetic notes to farmers he had stolen food from also didn't help. The Kaura Breakout during World War II, over a thousand Japanese prisoners of war were taken to Camp 12 near Kaura in the Australian Central West. This was of great shame to the Japanese, who were taught to choose honorable death on the battlefield over capture and imprisonment. Although many Japanese POWs initially settled in playing baseball and staging plays, in 1944 more war-hardened and radical inmates were arriving. Bearing news of Japan's losses in the Philippines and Saipan, tensions with their camp authorities were exacerbated, and so an escape attempt was formed. Now known as the Kaura Breakout, it was the largest escape attempt in military history, and the bloodiest. Unlike the others in this video, guards knew about the attempt in advance, having been tipped off by a prisoner a few months earlier. But rather than do anything about it, like search for hidden weapons or post extra guards, the major of the camp roundly declared the whole thing bloody nonsense, kept calm, and carried on. Except for installing two machine guns pointing directly at the Japanese camp. Then, at 2 a.m. August 5, 1944, all hell broke loose. Japanese prisoners suddenly appeared all across the yard in pre-planned groups. Fires broke out across the huts and tailor's shop until they were out of control, 
wielding blankets to protect themselves from barbed wire, over 900 prisoners of war made a break for it all at once. For a time, it was two soldiers and a machine gun against a thousand Japanese. Despite successfully killing dozens as they ran, the soldiers at the gun soon found themselves overwhelmed and were stabbed and clubbed to death as the Japanese stampeded their way towards freedom. After a night of chaos and carnage, four Australians and 231 Japanese prisoners had been shot, stabbed, or burned in the huts, and a further 108 were wounded. Of the 1,104 in Camp 12, over 300 successfully escaped, although not for long. Dozens of the dead POWs had either hung themselves or cut their own throats. Within nine days, all 334 of the POWs who survived the escape had been recaptured. The Kaura breakout became one of the biggest cover-ups of World War II, with the truth and the scale of the escape attempt only being fully uncovered decades later. Ted Bundy One of the most infamous people in this video is the silver-tongued serial killer Ted Bundy. Long known for his charisma, charm, and intellect, Ted Bundy was the horror story of the 1970s, tracking down and killing at least 30 women, all while evading police notice, simply through his good looks and winning personality. Even when in jail, he continued to have admirers, both female and male. He even got married in 1980 to a Miss Carol Ann Boone, who apparently didn't care that he spent his free time tricking women into his car to murder. Ted Bundy actually escaped police custody twice, but it was the first time he did so that was the most unbelievable. His escape involved no tricks, no weapons, simply the power of persuasion. After being arrested in 1977, Ted Bundy chose to appear in court as his own attorney. Sent from Garfield County Jail for a preliminary hearing in Aspen, the judge was persuaded by Bundy to have his handcuffs and leg shackles removed. During a recess, he asked to visit the court's library to continue working on his case, despite being a potential serial killer. Ted was described by the guards as friendly and personable and ultimately a likable fella. Using his gentle demeanor and wit, he convinced the guards to allow him to enter the library uncuffed and unchaperoned. In a move anyone could have seen coming, Bundy took his chance to escape. He jumped 25 feet from the library window on the second floor to the ground and promptly headed off into the Aspen Mountains. He was recaptured six days later, and eventually on January 24, 1989, after another escape attempt, marriage, and a child, his death sentence was finally carried out. El Chapo Possibly the most famous Mexican drug lord of all time, El Chapo was the name given to Joaquin Guzman Loera. Whoever gave Guzman his nickname must have been brave, as El Chapo literally translates to shorty, referring to the drug lord's short stature, standing at just 5 feet 6 inches. Still currently incarcerated, El Chapo's drug empire of cocaine, methamphetamines, marijuana, and heroin led to him becoming the biggest drug smuggler and trafficker into the United States of all time, rivaling the wealth and power of the famous Pablo Escobar. El Chapo attempted to escape jail twice, but it was his second attempt in 2015 that was the most impressively insane. Last seen stepping into the shower part of his cell, the only place hidden to the security cameras, Guzman still hadn't emerged 25 minutes later, prompting guards to go and investigate and see if he really just liked the long soapy wash. What they found instead was an escape tunnel leading all the way to a housing construction site almost a mile away. This wasn't any ordinary Shawshank-style escape tunnel either. Clearly, Guzman had help from experts on the outside. A marvelously constructed large hole over 33 feet underground, the tunnel was equipped with air ducts, artificial lights, and clearly built by expert construction workers. At 5 feet 7 inches tall and 30 inches wide, it was the perfect fit for El Chapo to make his escape. When he got to the other side, there was a motorcycle there waiting, which he promptly hopped on and rode off into the sunset until his next capture on January 8th of 2016.